This is One on One. When you first heard that they were doing Charlie Rose and Gail King, didn't you go, what? People like laughing at others, so I don't mind if the other is me. See, you go right into the character. That's what it is. <laughs> I'm bringing families together a half an hour each week. Man, I'm doing something special. And so I do feel successful. Welcome to a very special program called Newark at a Crossroads. This is an opportunity for you to meet two of the candidates, the only two candidates running for mayor in the great city of Newark, the uh, biggest and some say most important city in the uh, state of New Jersey. Roz Baraka is with us. He has uh, been a councilman in Newark since 2000 and? 10. And he is a principal at uh, Central yeah. High School. And then we thank you for joining us. Your opponent, uh, Shavar Jeffries, will be joining us in a, another edition of this program. Excuse me, the other half of this program. But um, let me ask you this, simply put. post Cory Booker era, the biggest reason why you should be the mayor of the city of Newark is? Well, I believe that it's time, you know. So leadership is not called on uh, by ambition, but it's called based on necessity and time. I think the conditions in Newark call for the kind of specific leadership we bring to the table, this kind of grassroots, bottom-up leadership uh, that's clearly different from the leadership we've had in a very long time. Uh, Cory Booker set the stage, he turned on the lights, filled the audience with people, opened up the curtains, and now it's time for Newark to perform. And I think uh, I am the right person to get the Newarkers to come together and do the greatest performance that we've ever seen in a long time. <laughs> and Mr. Baraka, <laughs> what is the number one problem, the number one challenge that you see facing Newark that you will focus and tackle first? Well, people talk about public safety as being uh, the number one issue in, in the city. But I, I see that as a symptom, and I, I would agree that public safety is an issue in the South Ward, the East, the North. Uh, uh, but really, I think it's jobs and economic development. So I think that Newarkers uh, need a, a host of jobs, living wage jobs, uh, to stabilize families. We need economic growth, uh, not just in the downtown, but in the neighborhoods where people live at every single day, uh, to begin to bring some life back to these communities and these neighborhoods. So that's what, it, that's what Newark needs, but how do you get it? Well, we various ways, right? So Newark has a few clusters uh, in the city. So we have a kind of transportation cluster. We have the medical cluster. We have educational clusters. We have a seaport that's growing uh, that we have to begin to develop a strategy around. We also have to invest in workforce investment to make sure that we train uh, Newarkers to be prepared for the jobs in the growing markets that are there. We have to expand the college community, build more retail, uh, not just downtown and neighborhoods, like I just said earlier, put more housing. Uh, in our community, so put people to work uh, around projects and, and in areas that are growing in our city, expand our small business base. We have 400 manufacturers in the city that need research and development, that need technical support, that we have to use Rutgers, the best business school in my opinion in the country, to get involved and help us to grow these small businesses and put more Newarkers in jobs. You know education better than most because you uh, are hands-on, leader, Central High School. So many children in the city of Newark uh, struggling, um, not succeeding in the way that any of us, uh, all of us, would want them to. You have been critical of the school superintendent, Cami Anderson. You have been critical of the state's control of the Newark Public Schools for many years, which it's been in control of the city schools. Your biggest beef is what? Well, the state has been in control of the schools for almost 20 years, and we have not seen any really significant uh, reason that they should still be there. Uh, ultimately, the school should be under the control of the people. I mean, uh, local support, local control is what we ask for and what we need. Uh, number one, uh, Cami Anderson, the superintendent, state appointed superintendent, is doing a lot of radical and disruptive things in the city without the consultation of the people, without any, without any concern for what the people believe or think, no, no community engagement whatsoever. Uh, she's closing or proposing to close many schools and have closed some already. Uh, without even informing parents of where their kids will go to school, what's going to happen to these neighborhoods. There's no busing uh, in our city, so parents have no way of getting kids across the city when you're talking about a city where 50 percent of the population don't even own a car. Uh, so these things need to be slowed down and they need to be uh, vetted by thought partners in the city. Respectfully, though, slow down in a situation, um, Roz, where graduation rates are very, very low in a situation, you know, again, better than anyone, where so many kids are struggling. What would you say to those who say, you know, well, we need to speed up the reform effort? You say? You know, I, I would agree reform needs to be speed up, sp right. sped up, but I think it's vulgar to, to say that the only reform is the reform that these people come up with. So the only reform is that we close schools, 
that we lay teachers off, that we renew these schools that are not working. Uh, those things are not reform to me. Those are kind what, of real what estate reform practices. reform look like in your view? Reform happens in the classroom. The closest uh, to the classroom that things are, the better and more pos possible you'll begin to see kids begin to learn. So reform to me looks like longer school days. Mm. It looks like getting... You'd be open to that. Absolutely. We were the first school at Central in, in Newark to have a longer school day. Central High School uh, did that, but not just extending the time, but extending coursework, like pro dip, providing students with opportunities to take courses that they wouldn't have the opportunity to take before, bringing New Jersey Performing Arts Center in, bringing the library and the museum in. So those are the things that need to happen, and, and teachers need to have quality job embedded staff development. Those things need to happen. You need to help teachers improve their craft, and we need to provide a robust curriculum in these schools. What's your position towards charters? You want to increase charters? Do you support co-location charters in public well, we schools? we live in a free market economy. Charters have a right to come to, to Newark and uh, compete for children. And you would encourage and, them to well, do so? Well, th they have a right to do so, and I, I'm not going to stop them. They have a right to do that. They have the right to uh, compete for children and, and grow if they can and, mm -hmm. and, and help us educate co children. Co-locate them in public schools? And help them educate our children, but ultimately, my job is to make sure that we have strong public yeah. schools. And just one more on, on parental choice. Would you support uh, a pilot program in Newark that would allow vouchers to, to happen here in Newark? I'm a pilot program. I'm absolutely opposed to vouchers, period. I don't think, there's, there's no proof or evidence that vouchers even work. So this whole discussion. But if you have a pilot program, this, maybe you'll find the proof that it well, works or it doesn't work. I know what does work, though. What does work is job and better staff development. What does work is extended school days. What, what does work mm -hmm. is to make sure we have a robust and diverse curriculum. So those things do work. So we can invest in things that do work and not waste money trying to speculate on things that we know haven't worked before. Uh, Mr. Baraka, Mr. Jeffries has been critical of you in a range of areas. He'll have his opportunity to talk about that. Biggest reason why he should not be mayor is? Well, he doesn't have any experience. I mean, even Cory Booker, when he came to Newark, New Jersey, became the councilman first. The guy was an uh, assistant super assistant attorney general, uh, the third in charge for two years, came to Newark, uh, you know, was on a school board for three years, has, have, has no uh, municipal experience whatsoever. Mm. Uh, so I don't, and this crit critical and crucial time in Newark, I don't think is we have the time to waste to, to learn on the ground, like, so they have to move forward. Well, quick follow-up on the issue of crime. One of the things that uh, Jeffrey says is, hey, listen, look at the South Ward where you've been counseling. Crime is, is, right. is, is out of control. Right. That's the most disingenuous thing I ever heard Go of. Go ahead. So, I mean, the, to, to assume, to make people believe that the Attorney General's office, the third in charge, has more uh, effect on crime in the city of Newark than the mayor of the city, than the police director, than the police captain, the chief, and everybody there. So the only two people that affect crime is the third in charge of the attorney general's office and the councilman. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of. So crime is, violent crime is up in the South Ward, but robberies and, and burglary is up in the North and the East. So the people on this ticket, are they also responsible for the crime that's going up? So how would no, you reduce, not. what steps would you take to reduce all crime across New, uh, Newark, especially murder rates? I mean, particularly there are a few things that we have to do. One, we need more police officers on, on the street in our community targeting folks who we know are committing these crimes. So the police have the information and the demographics to do this. We need to take them out of the precinct, take them out of the community affairs, take them out of the offices and put them in the neighborhoods where they belong, particularly in a time when the police numbers are dwindling. We, we need to do because that. Because of a budget crisis. Because of a budget crisis. And we need to have the best police director and the best police chief to do that, to clean the department up and make those things happen. But on the back end, we need to make sure we begin to invest uh, in those neighborhoods where we have ro robust after-school programming, mentorship, literacy program, social services, job training, job skills that we target in areas that are high crime and high violence areas. And, and do this for us. Some media attention about your um, letter writing, if you will, on behalf of Al Tariq Gums. Right. Clarify for this. Uh, gang member um, involved in, well, in, in, when, in, when he was in jail, allegedly, if you will, I think convicted of um, plotting to commit a murder. And some criticism from Mr. Jeffries and others who said, hey, wait a minute, what is Roz Baraka doing, writing a letter on behalf of Mr. Gums, saying good things about him, and you turn around and said, wait a minute, if we're gonna fight crime, you've got to be connected to, associated with, and understand gang leaders. Make that case. Absolutely, and I, and I know you know, Steve, that politicians all over the country write letters for folks that are in jail every single day. But the, the reality is, uh, we, we're moving off of like Operation Ceasefire, 
uh, programs that the Justice Department have come up with that talk about involving ex-offenders, gang leaders, to help us to begin to reduce uh, a crime in our neighborhood, to stop the recidivism that's going on in our community, prevent other young people from joining the path that he's going. We're not asking Al Tariq Gums to come out of jail. We never did. He's, he has 20 years in jail. He's probably going to be in jail for the, the remainder of his life. The reality is he's locked up. He's a captive uh, audience now, and so we want to be able to use him to stop other kids you from doing no that You make no apologies of for jumping in and saying, hey, yeah, I have relationships with gang members. Because in 2004, you were involved in? Explain that. Well, in, in 2004, when I was the deputy mayor of the city of Newark, Sharp allowed me to travel. Sharp James. Sharp James, who was the mayor, then allowed me to travel around the country and find uh, ways to stop the gang increase in the city of Newark. And we had a gang truce. Uh, because of that, we brought 250 to 300 children or young people or gang members in uh, 500 Broad Street in Newark, New Jersey, and began a, a truce. People began to start talking about them, putting their guns down. Uh, workshops, skills training. Bill Cosby came in several times uh, to speak to them. We brought leaders in from all over the country. It's not coddling them at all. If Mr. Jeffrey says, no, you don't engage them. You just have to be tough with them. Or you do you not have conversations with them. So you'd be legitimizing a gang, a gang leader by, by trying to help him out. Well, the, the, the funny thing about that is that when folks go to jail, they come back home, right? So when they come back home in our community and they don't have the skills and things that they need, they create, they disrupt our neighborhood over and mm -hmm. over again. And if we continue to this cycle, then we have to stop the cycle. We're not coddling anyone. If you get caught doing a crime, if you're using guns, you're going to go to jail. That's the law, right? Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. Minute left, yeah, in a minute left, you know, the, the current mayor, because of certain actions that the current mayor has taken, Mr. Quintana, um, the state is threatening to take over the Newark budget. Do you think that the state has an argument to do so, and what would you do to prevent that and from And do you happening? really want this job, given that situation? <laughs> <laughs> the state has absolutely no reason to take over the city of Newark's Mr. Quintana budget. Mr. Absolutely, absolutely no uh, be reason to do it. And, and this transitional period, I think, is uh, wrong for them to even attempt to try that in the first place. Uh, there is no malfeasance, no misfeasance. The council is moving forward. No deadlock at all. But all so serious, I, I'm half joking, half serious. But, but you say to yourself, the state's coming in. They're looking at the fiscal situation. Is a job you say it's not the job that I thought it would be? Are you going to have that control? Well, I, I think we're going to make sure that the state, we're going to do what we need to to make sure that the state doesn't take over the, the budget, and we're going to have to work with them uh, and make sure that that does not happen. You're confident you can do that? Oh, absolutely. We're confident to, to let them know that we have a strategy, a plan of our own to make sure that Newark is fiscally strong and that we'll work with the state in whatever we could do. Roz Brocker, we greatly appreciate you coming on and uh, sharing your perspective. That Thank is most you. important. And remind people to vote on May 13th. May 13th. Thank you so much. All right. When we come back, a conversation uh, with the other candidate uh, for mayor in the great city of Newark, Shavar Jeffries. If you would like more information on this program or if you'd like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Visit us online at oneonone.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PhD. And follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. And with us now is Newark mayoral candidate Shavar Jeffries. Mr. Jeffries, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Now, Mr. Jeffries, what makes you the most qualified person to become the next mayor of Newark? Uh, it's the deep experiences I have uh, serving the people of Newark and producing results. I'm a former assistant attorney general for the state of New Jersey. Uh, our team uh, created a safety plan that reduced violent crime from 2007 to 2009 throughout the state of New Jersey. Uh, we doubled the graduation rate for kids convicted of crime, and much of the crime in the city of Newark is committed by kids. Uh, we also uh, reduced the rearrest rate for ex offenders by almost 30 percent. So it's a regular performance. Uh, and right now in the city of Newark, crime is simply out of control, uh, particularly in the South Ward, where my opponent hails from, where murders have gone up 70 percent. Uh, so we're going to stabilize and grow our city. We have to first stabilize and bring safety and security to our streets. Your uh, opponent, Roz Baraka, who was with us in the first segment. By the way, I want to make it clear that the election is being held on uh, Tuesday, May 13th, and, and you did not see the interview that we did with your opponent. He made it clear that um, you really do not understand crime and um, that he has been in the streets, he understands crime, and he can deal with it in a much more effective fashion than you can, and that your experience in the Attorney General's office is not what is needed. Well, obviously, he doesn't understand crime. He's been the councilman of the South Ward for the last four years, where murders have gone up 70 percent uh, under his watch. Uh, uh, every index crime is up in the South Ward under his watch. Uh, his approach to dealing with crime is to apologize for gang leaders. He's written letters seeking leniency for gang leaders who've killed Norkers. You're talking and about Al Tariq 
Gums. Yes, a gentleman named Killerik, uh, Councilman Brock, felt it important to write a letter seeking leniency for him. And that sort of culture is why we've murders have gone up 70 percent. Respectfully, Mr. Jeffries, he said on this program that he was not seeking leniency, that that gentleman is in fact doing the time because he did the crime, but rather it is important to have relationships and build rapport with gang leaders if in fact you want to be a leader in the city and deal with crime. Well, he in fact did, regardless of what he said, he did write a letter uh, to the federal court seeking leniency. I believe in reentry at the state level. I actually oversaw reentry pro uh, programs, but that's very different. Leniency is saying that people shouldn't get the kind of punishment they deserve uh, based, based on the reasons underlying leniency. Reentry says after you pay the price for the crimes you did, we want you to reenter into society effectively. And that's part of the reason this culture of apologizing for gang activity is why gangs have taken over the South Ward, why murders are up 70 percent in the South Ward under Councilman Baraka's watch. I'm not going to tolerate the, the levels of gang activity we have in our communities. I have a record of reducing that. I was the third most senior official in the Attorney General's office under Governor Corzine. In fact, our team did oversee safety plans that reduced violent crime throughout the state of New Jersey three years in a row. Uh, and so that's a record that speaks for itself. And so, so does his. Is, uh, Mr. Jeffries, is it safe to say that reducing crime rate and murder rate specifically is the number one issue that for you is the, is the number one focus that you want to tackle? Absolutely. Uh, you know, I go throughout, I was just with uh, a mother yesterday who talked about when she takes her child to the school uh, in the morning, uh, she keeps a knife in her coat uh, because uh, this past summer she saw one of her friends in her neighborhood shot and killed in front of her and her children. And these are the kinds of stories I hear throughout the city of Newark. Uh, people don't feel safe in our neighborhoods. We have young people being killed. Just this past Thursday I was at the wake for a young man shot 15 times uh, in the West Ward and killed last week. Uh, crime is out of control. It not only means unsafe neighborhoods for our families and our residents, it also hurts jobs and investments. Investments don't come to places uh, with 111 murders, which is what we had in 2013. So as the only uh, candidate with law enforcement uh, experience and an actual record of reducing violent crime, I'm going to bring that with me to City Hall and produce but, better but Mr. results. Jeffries, Mr. Barack would make the argument that your experience is not in the city of Newark itself in terms of government experience, in terms of experience on the streets making a difference. I mean, he is a principal at Central High School. High School. He has been a councilman for, for several years. He's a former deputy mayor, and he argues he simply said it right on the show. You don't have the experience. Well, I have dramatically more experience than he does, and I also have more experience in terms of producing results. I've also been a civil rights lawyer representing Norkers for 15 years on issues that matter to their quality of life, representing res residents uh, denied affordable housing, re representing re residents who are victims of domestic violence, uh, representing parents seeking better educational services for their children, representing Norkers who are facing foreclosure. I've been the president of the school board. I've been the counsel of the, to, to the attorney general. I run nonprofits in the city of Newark. I founded the Team Academy Public Charter Schools. Most importantly, I have a record of accomplishment, reducing violent crime, reducing the rearrest rate, creating a mortgage mediation program that took half of the families in the state of New Jersey, including many in Newark, out of foreclosure. In contrast, again, my opponent uh, pre has presided over South Ward, where murder's up 70 percent. He's been on the council at a time taxes have been raised 40 percent, at a time that cops have been laid off, which have made our streets more dangerous, and at a time that he's done nothing on his end uh, to bring any savings. He has multiple public jobs. He has his family members on the payroll. He has a taxpayer-funded car. He makes a quarter million dollars at a time that taxes are raised and our residents can't afford the basic well, services they need. But also, the other question that's interesting is, in spite of everything you say, he has gained the support of a fair number of the public employee unions. Fair assessment. Uh, he has uh, gained the support of, of the union and some other interests who were connected to the status quo. Uh, you know, we're about a, a, a fresh change. And if the people of Newark want the same sort of patronage-based politics uh, that we've seen in the past, uh, then my opponent represents that very well. Uh, we're going to be about making performance-based decisions in terms of how we move the city forward. We're not going to promise everything to everyone just so that we can get political support. Uh, we're going to move this city forward. And uh, the kind of decisions that my opponent makes is part of the reason that tax have gone up 40 uh, percent, why Moody's is threatening to downgrade the city's credit rating, and why the state is now threatening to take over the budget for the city. Want to All right, yeah, we'll talk, we'll talk about it. Yeah, all of those things to try to touch on, but let's talk about education. You've been yes, involved sir. in education, education reform. Your opponent has a 12-point uh, blueprint for education. What are the key issues that you will bring to education to reform education in Newark? Well, uh, I'm a strong believer in local control, that the parents of Newark ought to be able to elect the people who make decisions that affect the educational welfare of their children. Uh, we got to fight to make sure we have the resources in our schools, but then we got to fight to make sure we use these resources wisely. We have to make sure we have strong school leaders in our, uh, uh, running our schools and effective teachers in every classroom. Uh, okay, well, are you in favor of charter schools, increasing the number of charter schools and, and allowing them to co-locate 
uh, with public school. I'm in favor. Regular of, public I'm in. I'm in strong favor of parents making the decision about what school will serve their child. So if a Newark parent, if a Newark mother or father believes that a public charter school is in the best interest uh, to serve the educational needs of their child, I support the. You would encourage. Right. You would encourage more charter schools. I support the parents' right to make that decision. So How about a voucher, a pilot voucher program in Newark? Would you support that? I support choice through the public charter framework. I think that creates a greater public accountability. I think that's the best way to do it. Uh, it also ensures that we can make sure that, that charter schools do the right so thing the for kids So the answer is no. Well. You would not support the idea of a voucher program, a pilot voucher program, Mr. Jeffries, that would allow parents in the city of Newark to have their child go to a non-public school and get a voucher from the government? I would never, I would never say never, no, because let me, I'm here today, my mother was killed, uh, my father abandoned me when I was young, and I'm in front of you today because I got a scholarship from the you Boys and Girls Club. You were 10 years of age when you lost your I mom. was 10 years old when my mother was killed and my father abandoned me shortly thereafter. And I'm only here today because I got a scholarship from the Boys and Girls Club to go to Seton Hall Prep and it changed my life. So I would never, if the decision came to me, I would never oppose any pilot but program. But why don't you support it wholeheartedly then? Because I think the better way, because when we're talking about public policy, we'll think what's the optimal way to produce the results we want. I think the best way to expand choice for families is through the public framework because there's greater public accountability. And if schools are failing the kids in Newark, are you in favor of closing down those schools? I'm in favor of any uh, remedy that'll make sure that kids receive an effective education. I believe there's a whole host of initiatives we need to pursue before we even think about closing schools. But if you have, and the school is failing and continues to fail, you would say close that school down? If, we, if there is no other option, but I think oftentimes there's many other options, in, improving the curriculum, making sure we have better teachers in the classroom, making sure those mm -hmm. educators have the resources that they need, making sure we have strong school leaders who can make sure that the teachers have an environment where they can be effective. I think usually there are many, many, many other uh, remedies we can use other than closing a school. That has to be the absolute last resort. Question. Um, you've, you've even referenced this, but I'm going to be more direct. Why not Ros Baraka? Well, yeah, I respect Councilman Baraka. He's fought for 20 years for communities that oftentimes other people didn't uh, uh, fight for. But he has no record of performance. In fact, it's a failed record. As a councilman for the South Ward, murders have gone up 70%. There is no development in the South Ward. Foreclosures are up. Unemployment is up. He's been the principal of a public high school for almost 10 years, and those children are beautiful and amazing and have limitless potential. Uh, but it, when he started, it was one of the worst performing high schools in the state of New Jersey. Today, it's in the bottom 5% of high schools in the state of New Jersey as a part of that school. They're from a different set of numbers, but it's because he would argue that Central High School is, in fact, uh, doing very well by those students. And, and so I, I'm not sure, I'm not going to play the numbers game, but he would argue that's one of the reasons why he should be mayor because of the success of Central High. As of October 2013, the state of New Jersey, and anybody can look it up on the DOE website, uh, found that this Central High School was what's called a priority school, which means it's in the bottom 5% of high schools in the state of New Jersey. Uh, that's not the kind of record I think he should be proud of. And I also don't think he should be proud of a record where murder's gone up 70%. If murder is flat, that is a disaster. Murders have gone up 70%. Yeah, you, 45 you keep murders repeating that, and you just give a whole litany of the things why you don't, of, of his failures, but you said at the outset that you respected him. What do you respect him if he's got such a litany of, of failures? Well, I mean, I, you know, just uh, I respect the fact that he's been a vocal uh, advocate uh, for uh, uh, disinherited and dispossessed communities for a long period of time, but now we have to hire a mayor. Hmm. So I, I respect a lot of people. That doesn't think I, I believe they're the most qualified or even qualified at all to be the mayor for the city of Newark, the largest city in the state of New Jersey. One question on education, at least sure. from, for me, the last question on education. Would you support, uh, if there have to be layoffs of teacher, would you support changing the system so that uh, the people who remain in the schools are the most qualified or the best teachers rather than the ones who have served in there the course. longest? If there has to be layoffs, to me it's just common sense. Mm -hmm. uh, that quality ought to be uh, a consideration. A consideration, and but more than a consideration, should it, be, should it trump seniority? I believe it should, but again, the way you do that is through the law. Uh, mm -hmm. So you can't have one superintendent unilaterally do that. Uh, we have to change the law in order to do that. And I do think the law should say quality uh, should be the driving determinant in terms of how we decide who's in front of our children. Final question from our perspective. By the way, the election again is on May 13th, uh, Tuesday. Important election, not just for uh, Newark, but for New Jersey and possibly the nation. State of New Jersey, looking at the finances of the city of Newark for a long time, take it over, the job becomes a different job as mayor. What does that mean if you become mayor? 
under my leadership, I'm confident I can hold this, the state off. And this is a critical issue. You got to have leadership that is experienced. I've managed budgets of $170 million at the state level and 1,300 employees. Uh, we reduce overtime. We reduce outsourced contracts. We cut waste, fraud, and abuse. Uh, in contrast, again, my opponent is part of the problem. Uh, multiple public jobs, family members on the payroll, taxpayer-funded card, making a quarter million dollars in multiple public jobs. That's, those sort of values are exactly how the city of Newark has gotten itself to a position where it could be taken over by the state of New Jersey. We're going to need professional, responsible, executive leadership, and that's the experience I'm going to bring with me to City Hall. Uh, it's a fascinating election. Um, we may call it <clears throat> Newark at a crossroads, yes. life after Cory Booker uh, has been mayor for the last uh, many, many years. Uh, once again, Shavar Jeffries, I want to thank you for joining thank us. You. And also your thank opponent, you. Roz Baraka, I want to thank him as well for joining us. It is an important election for Newark, for New Jersey, for the nation. Indeed. We'll make sure we see you next time and make sure you get out there and vote on Tuesday, May 13th. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence. And 13 for WNET, NJTV, and WHYY. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Virtua, the New Jersey Education Association, Johnson & Johnson, the Ollendorf Center, the Adler Aphasia Center, the Russell Berry Foundation, and by this public-spirited organization. Promotional support provided by the Star Ledger, powering NJ.com. And by NJ Biz, all business, all New Jersey. One on One with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System. When you work in a public school, you're a part of the community. So when Superstorm Sandy hit, the school employees jump right in to help. The middle school here served as a refuge for people who were forced from their homes. We all pitched in to help. Custodians, cafeteria workers, teacher aides, mechanics, groundskeepers, all pitching in to help out. School employees are part of a team, whether it's to help educate our children or to recover from a terrible tragedy. That's why I'm so proud to be a member of the NJEA.